Good morning. A new morning emerges, even a new shirt emerges. This morning finds ourselves on this side of the Huangpu. We were on that side. You can just see the greenery of the park over there. This course is the, uh, the Nanpu Dachau, the Nanpu Big Bridge. We cannot cross the bridge to get over there because it's only for traffic, but we can take the ferry, which is just leaving now, of course. I think we'll get another one in a few minutes. But as it leaves, we might also be able to see some of the working boats that are plying this river in this early morning. The tide is rising and the traffic is moving upstream, which is a topic we'll talk about in another episode. Right, I think it's time to get down to the ferry terminal before we miss another boat. So we'll see you soon. It's a very simple thing, a bridge over a river. It's a very... It's quite majestic. I can imagine someone having a hobby about going underneath all the major bridges in the world. Well, I've done the Golden Gate. Now I've done the Nanpu Dacha. Single band, single scan, single span, cable suspension bridge. Short though. So this is the, the Nanpu Dachau, which is the first major bridge that crossed the Huangpu um, and joining the two parts of modern Shanghai or urban Shanghai. I can tell you that it has a span of 423 meters. When it was built and opened in 91, it was the fourth longest cable stay bridge in the world. Now it's something like the 51st. And it has an end-to-end -end length of about eight and a half kilometers, which is phenomenal. But the, the middle portion that crosses the river is about three quarters of a kilometer. It takes six lanes of traffic. And as you can see, by looking straight down its throat, it has a clearance that will just about take the World Financial Center which is what we call the bottle opener building, but not quite the Pudong Tower. Never mind perspective. It's a lovely bridge. I like cable tie or cable stayed bridges. All right, soon we come to floor. And now is the time to find a bicycle. Right, here we go. Plenty of bikes. I think I'm going to take this one. Now, here we are, the uh, ferry terminal. It's a nice crossing. Always like being on water. Now, if I can just find the, the entry back to the cycle path, that would, be, that would be quite something. Let's see if I can. Maybe along here. Mm -hmm. 
isn't that way it must be this way but it is still rather bone rattling on the sidewalk I think I'm going to get on to at least come to this cycle path by the road oh that's better and this bike I have found is a bit squeaky and stiff and old Right. Well, that isn't going to do it. I think it's time to turn around again. Once you're on this cycle path, it's wonderful. Getting onto it could be another trick. Now then wasn't down there, it wasn't up there, so it has to be up here. And of course, once I'm on this path, it feels oh, a lot better. There's a good bike. I'm going to get that bike afterwards. I'm going to get that bike now, in fact. I'm going to go back and get that bike. This looks and feels much more like it. Aha! Oh, yes. Now I'm on the road to victory. There it is, right above me. Great. <laughs> there it is, beside me. No, it's one of these two. Which one? Oh. Aha! Well, believe it or not, it's taken me about 15 minutes to find the entrance to the cycleway. You get the feeling that um, people who use the ferry maybe don't use the river park and vice versa. And it's my fifth bike this morning. So, in all, it's going really well. Anyway, as always, ever on. So even here in downtown Shanghai, we're pretty close to downtown, you can see a change is always happening. There's a cement dispenser, signs of deconstruction amongst all these parking towers. Some lovely modern architecture around here too. And this is one of my favorite spots in the park. You can now look straight down the throat to these three excellent buildings. It's Jim Mao, Shanghai Tower and the World Financial Center. And I will resist calling it the bottle opener building. Oh, too late. This is definitely the more ritzy end of things. I'm passing by some very swanky apartment blocks with curved balconies that overlook the river. I have a sort of a, almost a 270 degree outlook across the uh, eastern, sorry, the western part of the city. I wonder what these things cost to rent. I would guess there are 30,000 men maybe per month and upwards. Lovely old restaurant here called the 1918. One day I want to come here. It looks very, uh, well, inviting. <coughs> Where they can, they put some lovely flowers in here. Places to sit down and enjoy the 40 degree heat of summer. So I stopped here because I want to show you the, the eastern side of the old city, which is behind these buildings on the waterfront here. 
um, it it's, would never know that the old city was here. And the western side, which we'll visit at a later time, is more obvious. But just beyond these modern towers and beyond the river traffic um, is a section of the old city, but the buildings are still very low, um, one or two storeys, three or four perhaps, and impossible to see from here. But that, essentially, used to be the walled city of Shanghai about a thousand years ago. Very, very small. It was walled because it would be trying to protect its inhabitants from essentially Japanese pirates. It's hot today. Time to go. <laughs> This is the wonderful little service station, number seven, I think it is. And it's a place where Tai Chi happens in a sort of more formal sense than elsewhere. As you can see, there are three statues of people performing Tai Chi. There are many different types of Tai Chi, it turns out. And this is a sort of a therapeutic Tai Chi. And Tai Chi also takes advantage of the momentum that is developed in the body as you, you move um, from one position to another. Now, I think I'm coming up to the, the Yacht Club here. There's a sculpture outside of a cross between a wave and a damaged corkscrew, I think, which is very appropriate. Now, here the park really does become very thin. The, the apartment blocks encroach right up to the park and we lose all the trees and lovely greeneries. The people have to share the path with the cyclists. No bucolicness at all, really. Now, because the path is, well, the park is uh, thin here and mostly elevated, we have to gain elevation quickly because there isn't space to do it gently. So, there are lots of these circular spiral ramps, which are actually good fun. If you like that sort of thing, as I do. It's about lunchtime now. People are coming out from their offices and strolling along the, the park path. Of course, it helps that there are a number of very nice restaurants along here. I'm talking of almost lunchtime. I think it's about time we found somewhere to imbibe ourselves. Some nice restaurants down here. Let's try one one day. So we're taking a break here on the widest, widest and most commercial part of the, uh, of the Bund and the parkway itself. And from here, sneaking behind these buildings, the Shanghai Tower is amazingly, almost invisible, the Jim Mao Tower, that wonderful pagoda-like building, and then the um, World Financial Center, one of them, which we cheekily call the, the uh, Bottle Opener Tower, which I really got to stop doing. And of course, the Pearl Tower is very visible, very iconic. That's, one of the, that's the oldest tall building in this skyline. Um, it's funny how skylines look more impressive from the distance than they do when you're right up to them. And my, one of my favorite stores here, of course, is the Hagen Dazs. And across the river, across the Huangpu, you can see these turn of the last century wonderful buildings that I've pointed out before. You start way at the end, there's a Bank of China which is beside the Peace Hotel that has the conical top to it. You run down a set of buildings, a lovely white colored Art Deco building that sits beside the uh, customs house. In fact, the top of the customs house with the clock, that part with the three um, towers 
is a little bit of cheeky Art Deco that the architect snuck in there above what is otherwise a completely neoclassical building. Then there is what is now the um, HSBC Bank. Um, you trundle down through there through various, again, turn of the last century buildings. Sneaking in the horizon there, or that, that sort of cornucopia of buildings, is the Metropole, which is a beautiful red brick Art Deco building. And we'll have another episode all about that. And then all the way down here until you get to this rather mob well, it is a very modern looking cathedral like building that looks a lot like something out of Salt Lake City, Utah. That marks the northern edge of the old city, and it's, it's south of that point and to your uh, left, and now just beyond the, the green ship that is blocking that view is the old city of Shanghai. And that's why there are, well, there are virtually no uh, towers or skyscrapers or apartment complexes beyond that point until you get down to the waterfront farther downstream. So you can begin to pick up the modern buildings again. It's a lovely part of the Bund at night especially. All this area is lit up by wonderful golden lights. Um, we'll try to show you that later. We're almost in the shadow of the Pearl Tower. And even though it's about 10 years older than the, the, the coruscating Shanghai Tower and the World Financial Tower, it's still, well, as they say, wonderfully iconic. Aha, right. I knew this spot would come. The Shanghai Tower and the Jim Mao and the Financial Building the tall ones that I, I do like very much. They've been on the horizon the whole time. You may remember that famous scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail where the guards go running up to the castle gate, always a long way away, and then suddenly, there it is, it's right there. All 632 meters of it. It's hard not to be impressed. And it is, of course, a building within a building the top of which contains apparently one of the most innovative mechanisms to dampen the vibrations during a, um, typhoons or other big storms. I'm uh, stopping here because I end getting off the bike too, which is oh yeah, double your money. This is one of the few places along the park you can get a full view of the Pearl Tower. It's um, not the tallest in the world by any means, but it is Shanghai, iconically, a wonderful rotating restaurant near the top, and a walking glass platform even, even nearer the top. And then the modern building beside it, the sort of concrete edifice, is the Museum of Art, Pudong. I've also seen it referred to as the Modern Museum of Art, or the Museum of Modern Art. In any case, it is the Museum of Art, Pudong, or MAP. And right now, there's a wonderful ex exhibition of, of Turner, taken mostly from the Tate Gallery in Britain, and other artists from the Tate too. So this is the downtown part of the River Park. It's very thin here, and it's quite busy too. And of course the buildings are very, very close. So it's difficult to get a good view of them, at least without stretching your neck, straining it all the way back. Which is easier for me than it is for you. As with all tall buildings, of course, you, the view of them is always hidden when you get close. Oh, 
Oh, that's nice. Now you don't often see this. The base of the Pearl Tower in front of the magnificent Shanghai Tower. This is the uh, memorial.